On October 30th, 1963, three astronomers at the Lowell Observatory in Arizona witnessed a strange phenomenon on the moon. For several minutes, a strange reddish glow and dome-like phenomenon appeared over and around several craters on the moon. Today, these are referred to as the 1963 Aristarchus events. To this day, scientists continue to debate whether these are real physical events or misinterpretations of data and observational artifacts. Today I will explore the cause. In doing so, I hope to show that the universe is electric and interconnected in fractal relationships and uh, dispel some lunar myths about aliens. So, on October 30th, 1963, there are five factors in play. Jupiter was closest to Earth in 50 years. Jupiter was closest to the Sun in 12 years. The Moon was closest to Jupiter in 50 years. The moon was closest to Earth all year. And Earth was moving towards perihelion on January 4th. In 1963, the Moon's closest approaches to Earth occurred on October 30th and November 28th. So this is what October 30th alignments looked like. And to be honest, the reports of dome-like glows are kind of overstating what happened. It wasn't incredible. There was just a slight phenomenon of obscuration, mostly, and color, like plasma. Now, on November 22nd, 1963, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And the Aristarchus events basically bookend that. On November 28th, one month after the first event, astronomers again saw pinkish streaks and light red appearing around the interior of Aristarchus' sunlight crater. The morning country was not focused on the moon. So this is what the 28th alignment looked like, and you can see that the inner planets form a decent alignment together, almost in a 90 degree perpendicular alignment with Jupiter. Now the color faded over time, but in the morning they again saw deep purples, blues, violets, and they were very vivid in the crater floors and around the crater. These became known as transient lunar phenomena, short-lived localized changes in the normal appearance of the moon. And this can include colors or colorless glows, gray shadows, brightness changes, and simple obscuration of details of the surface. And this is what I want to propose for how planetary alignments lead to mass and plasma shedding events that lead to lunar mare ejections and the fractal planetary formation process I describe in my other videos. So today, September 10, 2022, I predict that there will be another transient lunar phenomenon between now and January. And I say this tentatively. The biggest difference is that in 2023, the moon's perigree to Earth doesn't occur until July 4th. But will the world be distracted with morning and power transitions during Jupiter's close approach? The alignments today on September 10th, 2022, we do have uh, Jupiter near perihelion, near its opposition. Uh, the lunar monthly perigree was a couple days ago and uh, the full moon is occurring. So this is very similar to the previous alignment on October 1963. Now on September 26, 2022, Jupiter makes its absolute closest approach to Earth since 1963. Also on this day, we end mourning for Japan's Prime Minister Abe and England's Queen Elizabeth, and it is Rosh Hashanah. Again, reviewing the alignment in 63 versus the September 26th alignment that is upcoming. And this appears to be the best candidate for another phenomenon to occur. And again, I guess next month after that. The full moon two weeks later is probably the next most likely time to produce an event. The opposition of Jupiter is key. And the only question that remains for me is uh, whether the new moon will not have this occur because it's not between the Earth and Jupiter, thus getting pressure uh, pushed by both the Sun and Jupiter, sort of like a little zit popping. And that's sort of what you might imagine planets doing in uh, this model of fractalization. Small surface ejections popping off due to pressure from both sides. It's another angle of the alignment, and uh, the difference here again is gonna be the moon being in new, and on the 26th, we are also going to have Venus and Mercury in alignment with Earth and Jupiter and the Sun. So it should be interesting to see what happens. And I'm uh, just curious to keep an eye on it, and I hope you will too. So just again to review, 
Jupiter's perihelion was in October in 63, and Earth's perihelion was on January 4th. This uh, 2023 coming up, they're both going to be in January. So uh, when we look at those alignments, those are also potential events to be aware of. I don't know if these alignments will produce anything, but uh, I thought we should look at them as a follow-up. On the 20th and 21st, the moon is going to be new again, so I don't know whether these will produce anything, but something to think about. In 68, Hartman and Harris proposed that the Aristarchus events could be explained by the eruption of volcanic material, or a fire mountain. Now three of the transient luminar phenomenon occurred near former lava flows, but there are no signs of recent eruptions and the crater is 175 million years old or older. I want to dispel the idea that the moon is no longer considered geologically active. That is a old idea that has been outgrown in um, NASA and the higher echelons of science. Sometimes it just takes time to trickle down. And the idea of Graben, which are basically faults that are dead on the moon, um, are not too well studied and they're still starting to be understood, but they surround the lunar mares. And they are a dead fault system from when the moon was cooling after it finally slowly moved away from Earth. But the passes by Earth that were close and the plasma exchanges between the Earth and Moon all occurred in this central face towards Earth. And uh, all around the mares, there is a dead fault zone, which I show in the Grail image uh, that NASA created in 2018. So it's kind of new, but they admit, you know, that the Moon is still geologically active and the Grabens are basically evidence of the Moon shrinking because they think that the core is still cooling and they have evidence of geological activity within the last 50 million years now. So we should stop repeating old myths that NASA told a long time ago when they didn't know as much as we do today. Here, Dr. Waters says, we think the moon is in a general state of global contraction because of cooling of a still hot interior. The Graben tell us forces acting to shrink the moon were overcome in places by forces acting to pull it apart. This means that contractional forces shrinking the moon cannot be large or the Graben might never form. This weak contraction suggests the moon, unlike terrestrial planets, did not completely melt in the very early stages of its evolution. And so, again, these are cyclical events happening because of orbital dynamics and orbital alignments in the entire solar system. And in the earlier solar system, the planets were much closer, and so the pressure and electrical charge between the planets was much greater. And so that's how the mares got blown out, that's how the craters were formed by electrical discharges, and it all just kind of flows in a natural state as opposed to being magic like accretion. So I'm just going to leave you with a few facts here, and you can enjoy and think about them and consider this, and I don't know whether it will happen or not, but I'm putting it out there because I don't mind being wrong. Thanks for watching, and uh, please subscribe.